There are huge unanswered questions about the world. People talk about the Big Bang as the origin of time and space, but we don't really understand that at all. We just mean that we run time backwards to a point where all our equations fail. Over the last hundred years, we've learned a huge amount about the universe. Essentially, everything that's important in cosmology is less than a hundred years old at this point. And in fact, much of that progress has happened in the last 30 years or so. You know, many of the things that interest me today in my research didn't exist when I got my PhD. I call myself a particle cosmologist, which is supposed to explain that I'm interested in physics that puts together the physics of the very tiny, quantum mechanics, the sort of physics of the subatomic world, together with the physics of the very large, the universe, general relativity, gravity, things like that. And I'm interested in questions where both those types of physics, which were sort of the pillars of 20th century physics, come together and are needed to explain questions that arise either looking at the universe or in understanding the fundamental laws of nature. I went into mathematics, I think, because at the time I, I thought it was very pure. I was very interested in pure mathematics. Uh, and also I, I have this distinct memory of a teacher telling someone else in front of me that they would not be able to go to Cambridge to study mathematics because it was too hard for them. And at that point I thought, well, that's what I should do if it's supposed to be too hard. <laughs> You know, it was a very lucky time to be at Cambridge. Stephen Hawking had just written A Brief History of Time. Every year there was one course in the second year of studies that was not for credit and you could just go to. And that year he gave that course. And it was a packed auditorium. And, and I wouldn't say that's what drove me into doing what I do, but it was you know, one of those things along the way that you realize that, hey, that's connected to the kinds of stuff that I'm interested in. So by the time I got to my final year at Cambridge, I knew that I wanted to do theoretical physics, and I'd really come to love what I'd learned at the time about what's called quantum mechanics, this physics of the tiny. It's, you know, it tells you how atoms behave. It tells you really everything about how the subatomic world works, and I loved that, and I loved the sort of intricate mathematics of it. And I also really loved general relativity. This is Einstein's theory. It's, uh, it's incredibly beautiful. It's incredibly self-contained, and I, I really... That sort of spoke to both the sort of mathematics and physics sides of me. So I think most of us are driven by, by the chase, by the hunt, by the ideas. And uh, so I think, you know, if you are lucky enough to play a part, however small, in answering some fundamental big question like that, then I think you're just a... You know, you'll, you'll take pause, you'll be happy that happened, and then you'll be off in search of the next thing because that's what excites you. <laughs>